Hey guys, welcome to the Myrtle Beach Art Museum's Kids Art Online. So today we are going, or for this video, I am going to work with my five to seven year olds as well as my eight to 12 year olds. It's one really intricate project that can easily be modified for all age groups between five and 12. But first, I'm gonna take you guys on a little virtual tour to show you the artwork that's in our galleries that inspired the project that we're going to be doing today. This piece of art is what's going to inspire our project later, and it is by the artist Vera Manigal called Untitled Fanner Basket, made from marsh bulrush and unopened centered leaves of the cabbage palm. Now what's exciting about this piece is the intricacy of the weaving, and it's very influential from our culture here in the low country of South Carolina. So look closely at the sweet grass basket and all the intricate details that are taken into it. There's so much rich history and storytelling just within these strands. And in our project, we're going to use a type of weaving to create a slightly more simplified version of this with bright, bold colors to tell our own stories. So for this project, these are all the materials that you will need. Now you can get any size, color, shape of paper that you want. Um, if you don't have colored paper, you can always add a little bit of extra creativity to it. And you can draw designs, you can color the paper using any type of crayon marker, whatever you prefer. A pair of scissors and a glue stick. Now you don't need the glue stick, it is optional, but very helpful if you do have one. Now I'm gonna choose, I'm gonna start with just two colored pieces of paper. And I'm going to choose yellow and purple. They are complementary colors. So the first thing that you wanna do is just start with one paper and you're going to want to fold it in half. You can fold it in any direction that you want. I'm going to fold mine portrait, folding it long ways. And then any straight edge or you can even eyeball it. You just want to leave yourself a little bit of a distance from here to here from the edge. So you can draw a line so you can see it. Again, it doesn't have to be perfect. Just a little bit of space, probably about two finger widths or an inch or so. And then grab your scissors. And then from the folded edge, you want to cut, not from the open side. You're gonna cut using your scissors all the way up to the line that you drew or to your stopping point, that way you know. And you can cut these at any width or thickness that you want. You could make these thinner. You could also make these curvy. Not do a straight line, do a curvy line. Cut them thinner, make a thin one. To fill the paper all the way across, that's what you wanna do is cut all the way through from one side to the other. Remembering to stop at the line that you drew here. Now for your other paper, we're gonna put that aside for right now. We'll look at that in just a second. For your other paper, you do not want to fold it. You can, but... Now depending on how you cut this paper is going to kind of help determine how you cut this one. But you can, again, add that extra step of creativity and modify this to your personality. So this paper, when I unfold it, my yellow, you'll see now I have all these nice openings, but they're still attached because I left that border there. Since these lines go vertically, I want these to go horizontally. 
I want, I'm going to cut mine in the opposite direction. So to do that, I'm just going to turn my paper landscape and cut all the way across. For this one, I want individual separate strips like this one here. And again, you can decide the width. You can make these more narrow. You can make these more wide. You can also make these curvy lines as well to kind of add a little extra pizzazz to your artwork. You're going to continue doing this all the way across. Now, as you see here, I have all these individual strips and I still have my whole piece of paper that's still attached, but has the strips in between it. So you can grab any one of your strips, your individuals, and you're going to weave it through our anchor paper. We're gonna call this our anchor paper. And an easy way to start out is remembering the over-under pattern. So for my first strip, I'm going to go over. For my second strip, I'm going to go under. Over, under, over, under, over, under, over, under. And since I cut this horizontally against this vertical, it should fit perfectly to the edges. And I slide it up to the top. Now, if you cut yours the other way and you have extra hanging off the edge, like you have some extra paper hanging out over here, you can always take that and fold it over the edge like this. And fold it. And that'll help secure it. Help secure it in place. Now another alteration to this, I did a simple over under pattern. Sticking with that as my base, you're going to want to alternate and go under, over, under, all the way through. And once you've completed the entire paper, you should have some very fun geometric pattern of some kind. And since I chose complementary colors of purple and yellow, they're really nice and vibrant and they pop. The complementary colors complement each other. And this is where the glue can come in handy. So if you didn't have any extra hanging off the edge to fold over, if you want to help secure your pieces, you can always just attach a little bit of glue to stick it down on either side. Here is another example using analogous colors, which means that they are three colors of the same family. So red, orange, and yellow. And I did more of a swirl cut or a wavy cut, focusing on a different type of line, not keeping everything very. On a simpler scale, I did alternate my colors again from green, blue, and purple, but I made my strips much wider and very straight. And if you want to advance it even more, I kept this very narrow, very small strips, and it was more of a storytelling. So feel free to use your quilts to tell a story about yourself. I drew an image using crayon of the marsh and then I also on the other paper drew two images of two figures and once I interwove them and they became very abstract pieces of artwork. So there are many different alternative routes that you could go with this and it's very exciting to see how much you can modify it. But thank you guys so much. Be sure to take a picture of your artwork and upload it to your favorite social media and make sure to hashtag MB Art Museum and hashtag Kids Art Online because I want to see your work. I want to see all your beautiful masterpieces. Thanks guys.